So if you open Web Server for Chrome and you select V2, then you get this page. Click the Add Sphere, Add Box, and that's physics working away, working its magic. So let's have a look at the code for how we did this. Okay, let's open V2 and look in index.html. We've added um, some CSS. The GUI, which contains the buttons, is positioned in the top right hand corner and has a width of 100. Um, and then some styling for the button. So that's the GUI, button add sphere, button add box. We've got our three library as usual. We've got Canon this time, canon.min.js, which you'll see is stored in the libs folder again. And the Canon debug renderer, really useful for debugging. So let's have a look in our games. In our constructor, we simply call the init method. So here's the init method. It creates a 3GS scene it sets its colour to black, it creates a camera with a narrower field of view, it's only 40 degrees. We position the camera and then we tell it to look at one in the Y. We create a renderer and append the renderer's DOM to the body, all familiar stuff this should be. Um, and then we get the buttons from the GUI, and it's the child nodes of the GUI. And then we apply on click events to, to them, which is add body and add body false. We'll look at that in a minute. Um, and then we call this init physics. So, first of all, we'll look at the init physics. The first thing we do is create a canon world. Nothing works in Canon without a world. So the first thing we do is create a world. And we're making the world a property of our game. We then create a, va a variable called fixed time step, which is going to be 1 60th. And then we set damping to a value. We tell the world what broad phase to use. There are several broad phases available with Canon. Uh, the simplest is naive broad phase. Then we set gravity. We're keeping gravity. A lot of the Canon demos have gravity as being minus Z. And so the orientation of the camera has the Z axis being up. Uh, I prefer to stay with the WebGL orientation, which is Y up. So our gravity has minus 10 in the, in the Y. So it's gravity is down the Y axis. And then we create a debug renderer. Very simple to do. We just create Canon debug renderer. We give it the scene that we've got and we give it the world. That's, that's the Canon world and that's the 3GS scene. Now we're going to create a plane. That's a shape. So Canon fundamental things in Canon are shapes, bodies and materials. So we've got a shape which is a plane so that's somewhere that is positioned at zero in the Z because remember Z is regarded as the up axis so zero in the Z as far as Canon's concerned is a flat plane, a flat horizontal plane then we create a material, no parameters, and then we create a body. That's a rigid body. If you do any Googling for anything to do with um, physics libraries, then you'll come across rigid bodies. And a Canon body is a rigid body. It doesn't deform. The mass of zero means it's static. It's not going to move. 
and we give it the material of ground material. And then because we want Y to be the up direction, we're going to rotate our body around the X axis by minus pi over 2. That's 90 degrees if you're unfamiliar with radians. Radians have 2 pi in a full circle, so 360 degrees is 2 pi. So minus pi over 2 is minus 90 degrees. Then we add our ground shape to our body and then we add our body to our world. And then we're just creating a, a simple object called shapes and we create a sphere shape which, have, which has a radius of 0.5. In Canon think of these units as being meters because the mass is in kilograms. So think of that as being half a meter. So it's going to create a sphere which is a meter, meter in diameter. And then a box that takes a Canon VEC3, that's a, that would be the same as a 3 vector 3, although they're not entirely the same, but they store an X, Y and Z value and have some methods available to them, but not the same methods. When we're creating a box, these values are half the extent of the box. So it's from the center out to the edge. So that would actually create a box that's one meter wide, one meter high, and one meter deep. And then we're just saying that the ground material is now a property of the game itself. And then we start the animate function. And if we look at the animate function, we step the world, that moving the world on, it's going to do all its calculations of where things should have moved to. And then we update our debug renderer, and then we render the scene. The debug renderer is going to ensure that all our lines that represent the shapes of our bodies are all in the correct place. So the one last thing we need to look at is the add body method. This has a single parameter which is optional but if it's, if it's missing then it's set to true. Um, we create a material, we create a body which uses this material and it has a mass of 5. So that's 5 kilograms. If it's a sphere then we add the shape sphere to the body and if it's, a, if it's not a sphere then we add the shape box to the body. And then we create a number which is going to be between 1 and 1 1.3 by using the math random method. And then we set the position of this body to, if it's a sphere it's going to be minus this value and if it's a box it's going to be this value. And it's 5 in the y and 0 in the z. And then we say the linear damping for the body is going to be the value that we saved when we created our damping at that point there. Then we create a contact material. So this is what's going to happen when ground material hits this material. It's going to have a friction of 0 and a restitution, that's how bouncy it is. If it's a sphere then it's going to be 0.9 so that's very bouncy. If it's a box, it's going to be 0.3 because it's not a sphere. And so that's kind of bouncy-ish. You could have a value of 0, so it's between 0 and 1. And you could adjust the friction as well. And then we add that contact material to the world contact materials. Using the method of world, add contact material. So this informs Canon that when it comes across a ground material, hitting this material, it needs to behave in this manner. No, no friction and either 0.9 restitution or 0.3 restitution depending on whether or not it's a sphere. If, you, if you're unfamiliar with the um, syntax here, then what we're doing is we're 
we're setting a condition, in other words that's like if, if sphere, then we do this, else do that. And it's a way of doing an assignment. So it's assigning a, pro, a, a value based on this condition. If this condition is true, this value pertains. If this condition is false, then this value pertains. It just um, allows you to do it in a single line of code. You're probably familiar with it, but if, you, if you're not, I'm just pointing that out. Uh, and the effect of that is to allow us to add, add spheres, bouncing away, and notice how bouncy they are. Yet when we add boxes, they're not nearly as bouncy, and it's not just because of the shape. And the debug renderer is looking after showing all the position of these things. Because Canon itself isn't there to show you actually any content. It's just there to calculate the position of things. And then we need to access those positions and orientations and apply them to something that we can actually physically see. Notice these uh, boxes moving about here. That's because a plane, and bear in mind our ground is a plane, a plane goes forever whereas our debug renderer only shows a limited size of it. It just shows it 10 by 10, whereas in actual fact it goes on forever. So when you, are, when you create a plane in Canon JS, it's infinite. It'll never drop off the side of it. So I hope that gives you some taste of the fun you're going to have with physics. This video is from the course Create a 3D Car Racing Game with 3GS and Canon GS. To get the course at a great discount, pull down the description.